Hello everyone, it's so nice to see you and welcome back to the Integral European Conference. This session is titled Leading with Consciousness. Your presenter, Mohamed Refat, will be presenting the new leadership model called Leading with Consciousness. This model combines complexity and capacity of consciousness with leadership lessons to answer the question, why doesn't leadership training produce the expected results organizations are looking for? Mohammed is an integral leadership and integral consciousness speaker, trainer, and coach. After a career in the pharmaceuticals and healthcare industries, he directed his focus to teaching leadership and consciousness. He became a certified member of the John Maxwell team and an associate certified coach from the International Coaching Federation. He's also a certified Enneagram and Integral Enneagram practitioner and a Reiki practitioner as well. In the first 40 minutes, Mohammed will be presenting the model and how it was created. After the presentation, we will break out for 20 minutes of exercise in groups of four and a short wrap up with Q&A at the end. As a reminder, this workshop is being recorded, so if you choose to share something or ask a question, you are also giving your consent to be part of the video replay. While the presenter is speaking, the chat box will be disabled to contribute to a supportive learning container. If you have a question along the way, please send me a private message in the chat panel. Of course, you can send a message in, uh, to everyone as well. I will collect your questions and present them during the Q&A time. You will also have the opportunity to ask your questions live by raising your hands during the Q&A session. Please keep in mind we are recording this session, so if you choose to share or ask a question, it will be in the video replay. Now, please join me in welcoming Mohammed to the session. Welcome, Mohammed. They are all yours. Thank you so much, Tina, for that beautiful introduction. Uh, Thank you everyone for uh, for coming, choosing to spend your morning here with me. I'm uh, so proud and honored to have honored to have this uh, opportunity. Uh, my name is Mohammed Rifat. Uh, I uh, I'm an Egyptian. I'm living in Egypt in Cairo now. Uh, and uh, as uh, Tina mentioned in her introduction, the the model leading with consciousness came about through a kind of a series of incidences driven by that question i think uh, everyone in the leadership industry everybody who's interested in leadership development probably asks that question why doesn't leadership training produce the expected results that the organizations uh, are looking for and to, to just to to bring you into uh, the model and how it you know was put together and let me just share a in a couple of minutes, that's a quick story. You get to know me a bit and, you know, to get to know the model as well. Uh, I'm a pharmacist by education. And uh, after graduation, I got into the field of pharmaceutical sales. Uh, after a few years, I, I found that, uh, that drive to, I want to understand how uh, best we can do, you know, understand whatever we're doing. So in, in my field, I was looking at sales and I went to the sales training. Training got me into coaching, got me into, it's not just about the skills, it's about leadership training. The point is, at a time when I uh, left my corporate career, I became a member of the John Maxwell team, I was deeply into the leadership industry. Okay, so teaching leadership, developing leaders. It's all about that. And I was so passionate about it. As I said, I quit my corporate job. I was doing this full time. Around that time, I came across a book uh, called Leadership BS. Leadership BS by uh, Jeffrey Pfeffer. Now, of course, BS, I think all of you understand what that stands for, and it doesn't stand for belief systems. Okay, so you get the point. His point was, Leadership training isn't working. We spend billions of dollars every year, millions, on the leadership development. And uh, 
we still have a leadership crisis, whether it's in, in, in corporate, in business, or in, in uh, politics, wherever. To be honest, I felt kind of attacked. You know, see, I'm, I'm so passionate about this thing. I did all these changes in my life. I'm in this industry, and here is this author. And to be honest, he has a point. It's something we see every day. Yes. Uh, efforts done uh, to develop leaders through this leadership industry don't really create the transformation expected. He offered some solutions, which I didn't agree with all of them, but it was an eye opener, you know, to hear someone from outside of that industry talking about these things. Around the same time, I read a book by Simon Sinek, you know, the, he, he, he did start with the why, very, 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 uh, very well known leadership speaker, Simon Sinek, and his book is called, the, uh, that book was called The Infinite Game. I'm just going to read you a couple of uh, sentences from that book, just to get a feel of what I mean. Now, these words are Simon Sinek's words, they're not mine. He said, I wrote this book not to convert those who defend the status quo. I wrote this book to rally those who are ready to challenge the status quo and replace it with a reality that is vastly more conducive to our deep-seated human need to feel safe, to contribute to something bigger than ourselves, and to provide for ourselves and our families. A reality that works for our best interests as individuals, as companies, as communities, and as a species. Now, I read those words and I felt, this guy gets me. Yes, this is why I'm doing this. It's to challenge the status quo, it's to make a change. So, but why do those efforts not work? I've got two people, one of them speaks to me about the transformation we wanna make and the other is speaking to the transformation that doesn't happen despite the efforts. And this is where consciousness comes into the game. And uh, as a, at that time, I was also a student of uh, Ken Wilber's integral uh, theory, understanding the stages, the structures and all that. And what became obvious to me from my work and from those different books and this different type of feedback is what's happening in the leadership industry is that we're trying to bring transformational change from a higher level whether that's a higher structure stage or a higher state stage. And when that is delivered, most of the time, you're either speaking from a worldview that your listeners and participants cannot see, or they just receive the information and translate it from wherever they are at the moment. So for example, very popular term these days, servant leadership, servant leadership. Now, in its essence, how servant leadership is taught and delivered in these trainings is how you change your mindset to see your position and influence and power as a leader, that this is a position of service, first and foremost. This is pretty much a green and second tier uh, kind of thinking. That's what generates that idea of servant leadership. Uh, of course, I'm, I'm assuming most of you here are familiar with, you know, the, the structure stages, the uh, the colors and the first and second tier. If not, we're going to get into it and explain it a little in a few minutes. So imagine delivering the concept of servant leadership for someone who is at level Two, uh, red, first person perspective, cannot see the world from someone else's point of view, driven by inconsequential thinking, very instinctive, uh, very, uh, 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 as I said, uh, driven by instincts, doesn't really think in terms of long-term uh, future. And you're talking about serving others probably that concept will fly over that person's head. They might even think it's just too fluffy, too weak. If you speak about that concept to someone who's at level four, which is Amber, someone who it's second, second person perspective, 
they can understand me, my view, and someone else's view. You either agree with me or you don't agree with me. You either belong to my group or you don't belong to my group. You can see the world the way I see it or you don't. Okay. People at that, that fourth level, Amber, are mostly, again, driven by structures, uh, driven by processes, how was it done before? Tell me how it's done so I can follow in the correct footsteps and do the same thing. You talk about servant leadership to someone attending a course and from that level, we haven't spoken about the levels, what's that person probably gonna do? And I've seen this happen live after the trainings in coaching. The person wants to serve, how best do they serve from their worldview? They serve by telling everyone how they should do things because they know best. They're the boss. They are the leader. They are the manager. So they, they want to serve, but the way they understand what serving is, is very different than what was being taught in the training. And then we realize that why the training isn't working. Of course, not to mention diversity. Again, a very green and second tier concept. You talk about diversity for people at level four, people at level five. What do you get? You don't get the inclusion of different backgrounds, different personalities, uh, appreciation and valuing of the, the diverse experiences that people bring to the table. What you get is how, for example, if you're talking level five, again, I'm talking from experience. I've seen this happen. And I think everybody here in the leadership industry probably saw the same thing. People from the orange level, level five, most of the time, what do they do with the concept of diversity? They need to achieve a certain percent of female representation in their teams or a certain percent of ethnic diversity in their teams. And it's not really about leveraging people's diverse capabilities. It's about how can we achieve the number that shows that we achieved diversity. So that's just a couple of examples to show you that consciousness needs to come into the into the game here so that we would understand how exactly can we teach and deliver what we need to teach and what is suitable for each level and that's where i wanted to bring those things together i i started to look into who else is uh, 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 what's the most recent you know uh, uh, publications on consciousness and leadership I found some you know, resources such as uh, Conscious Capitalism by John Mackey, The 15 Commitments of Conscious Leadership by Diana Chapman and other authors, Conscious Leadership, again, by John uh, Mackey and Steve McIntosh. They're very lovely uh, uh, resources. For me, it felt, but I think we still are struggling with another point. We're speaking from higher states, from uh, uh, subtle, uh, states maybe even higher than that, bringing these lofty ideas because the leadership industry is trying to cause a transformation, trying to bring people higher, trying to bring people up, but we still face the reality. It doesn't happen. The results don't happen as often as we want them. So that's where I decided to, how about if we just take the integral model structures and states avoid for now speaking of the structures that are not very common in the business setting in the leadership setting levels uh, seven and eight or eight to be specific to avoid how about we avoid mentioning the higher states of non-duality oneness joy love peace again, just in this setting, and map structures versus states in a different language, calling them complexities of consciousness and capacities of consciousness, change the language a little, create those leadership profiles, and start to have a guidance as to how and what a certain leader would, uh, uh, what they need to learn, how they would need to learn it, so it would guide them from one level to the next. And that's where leading with consciousness was uh, put together. Okay. So allow me uh, to share my screen.
sorry, just a second. So we can take a look at what that model uh, looks like, okay? So I'm going to, uh, to, for the sake of balance, I'm going to assume most of you have a background of integral uh, theory. Uh, what do the structures mean and what do the states mean? But at the same time, in case someone is new to this, so I will give a, a quick background. So in leading with consciousness, we begin with complexity of consciousness. What is complexity? It's, the, it's what corresponds to structures of consciousness in Wilbur's integral theory. It's the mental aspect of leadership. It's the infrastructure of the mind through which the leader sees the world. So it's going to guide how they think about the world, what they focus on, and what they filter out. That's going to affect uh, vision, strategies, uh, problem solving, decision making, prioritization, how they do all those things, how they look at relationships with their teams, that level of complexity, how many perspectives they can hold, how many complex points and parts of systems they can grasp at one time and see those relationships between all of them, things that are becoming very important important in leadership. So if that complexity is high or complexity is low, is it simple or complex, will pretty much affect what a leader does and how uh, they perform. So since complexities are basically structures of consciousness, as I said, I wanted to also to change the language a little to be closer to the leadership setup, the business setup. In my opinion, when I would use this and when this model would be used, we would avoid giving the leaders the background theory about it. We just get straight to the point, complexities. So <clears throat> you'd find that what corresponds to the red altitude in uh, Wilbur structures of consciousness is the would be called the lone warrior. Uh, why? Because again, this is the quick background for those of you who are not familiar. At that level, the leader would have first could could hold a first person perspective which means they see the world only from their eyes what they want what they need what the world is doing to them threats are happening to them something is stopping them it's in their way uh, people are giving them what they want or preventing that they don't really think in long terms of time. Things, they have an impulse, they have an idea, they want to act on it now. There's a problem, it should be solved now. Something is in my way, it should be removed right now. I see an opportunity, I want to go for it right now. So there's a lot of now uh, described as a lot of inconsequential thinking. It also comes with a lot of sense of power. I feel I am powerful, I can do this, I can achieve this, I can get this, I protect my people, not because I can see the world from their perspective, it's because they're my people, they are mine. So you can see a lot of me, myself, I, egocentric, has its positives, has its drawbacks, so it's not all bad, okay? Uh, and I designated it with the uh, expression, the lone warrior, a leader who would go at it alone. It's me against the world. Even if they're working in an organization, they probably feel that they can't see the rest of what's happening in the organization. They can see what's in their team and what's happening to them and with them and for them. The, uh, the next level is the cog or the cog in the machine. Uh, I've struggled a little, a little with the naming of this level. I didn't want to use a term that could sound derogatory to some people. So it's by no means intended that uh, this, uh, the people at that level are mindless cogs in a machine. It has to do with how they 
again, operate in the world from that level of complexity. It's a little more complex, second person perspective. They can understand my view of the world, someone else's view of the world. But problem is, my view of the world is usually the correct one. That's why I'm following it. So we, they, they, they excel in management, in keeping the status quo going, in keeping the machine well oiled. Everybody has a place, everybody has a, a, a role to play in again, the machine in the right way of doing things and they keep it going forward. It could be very rigid, could not see a lot of complexities in a, in a, in a very uh, 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 diverse, complex market, for example. But again, comes with its positives, comes with its negatives. Uh, orange, the, the level after that, I call the pioneer. This is where it's third person perspective, objectivity. What's the best way to do this? What's the most right way to do this? How, what's the most efficient? What's a new way to do it? What could be innovative? What else can we bring to the market? Uh, now we're looking at teamwork. Now we're looking at uh, leveraging the best capabilities. It's still quite self-referential. So what is the best way? The best way is, is, is what I see the best way. So what's gonna give me the most I want? Let's achieve the most sales. Let's look at the KPIs. Let's measure how we're gonna succeed. What we measure is what we focus on. What we measure is what we achieve. If we don't put KPIs, if we don't do a performance appraisal at the end of the year, performance is not gonna be driven higher. You see the pioneer driving that, uh, at, you know, driving the market, driving their team, looking at competitiveness. You see that, again, it has its drawbacks, it can pressure people, it could have a, it could, uh, have a sense of fear in it, it could have a uh, lax uh, appreciation of the different values and diversity of backgrounds and capabilities people uh, would bring, because again, if that leader identifies one good way of doing things, it's the best way and it's self-referential, they might not see the value that different other people uh, could bring. It's like you have a, one of these leaders is an extrovert, they might not pretty much appreciate introverts on the team because they've done something and it's worked for them, they might not see the rest. And uh, then, the next level, the harmonizer, which corresponds to the green or level number six uh, structures. Fourth person perspective, seeing value in everything, seeing value in all the different perspectives. Let's bring all the opinions to the table. Let's create a, har a harmony in the market. Why do we have to compete? You know, why do we have to compete with our competitors, why can't we work with them? Why can't we think in terms of abundance? There's more for everyone. If we stop fighting over, uh, over, over the cake, you hear a lot in the pioneer level, you hear a lot about the cake and the dividing up of the cake in the market. Why can't we make a bigger cake? Why can't we all share in, in this? You see that from the harmonizer level. But at the same time, there could be a difficulty with coming to a consensus. If all opinions are valuable, which opinion are we going to follow? If our competitors don't see the world the way we see it, how can we find a balance between our beliefs of abundance and harmony, but at the same time, creating profit? Uh, conflicts in a team could be difficult to resolve because now everybody's correct. Yeah, but... So what do we do? How do we move forward? And then you've got the puzzle master, which corresponds to the first of the second tier structures, which is teal. And <clears throat> now you start to see someone who's done that momentous leap as Claire Graves uh, and Wilbur talk about it. The ability to hold that, all those complexes at the same time, very much need where we are in the world today, where we're going. This is the leader that when COVID hit, they could see it coming a mile away. They could see the repercussions to the market, to the economy, to the policies, to how people might be afraid, how people in second, first level, second level, third level, fourth level might respond. How can they help their team members 
go through such a crisis, but at the same time, how they can see the benefits and the opportunities that are gonna arise in that crisis. Very complex systems thinking uh, type of leader who can navigate and between the levels and speak to all those different other levels that they might meet in the team or in the organization. So Lone Warrior, Cog, Pioneer, Harmonizer, and Puzzle Master. Those represent the levels of complexity of thinking of a leader. We've got the, the other dimension that we want to include. Now, <clears throat> I'll, I'm, I'm taking a little bit of time to just make sure that uh, if anybody who's not familiar with these terms is familiar with it. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the chat. Uh, I apologize if I'm, if I'm not looking at them and responding right away, but we will uh, hopefully be able to get to all that during the breakout and uh, the Q&A. So when it comes to the capacities, which corresponds to states of consciousness. Now, you know, Wilbur in, in, in the integral theory usually talks about gross, subtle, causal, and non-dual. So I was thinking, but if we want to talk to leaders about states, uh, it could be a little challenging to speak in terms of gross, subtle, causal, and non-dual. The way I envisioned it, the way I visualized it, is that a capacity of consciousness is like a reservoir of energy. It's like every leader has complex scaffolding of the mind where they can carry all these simple and ever complexifying thoughts, and that's the complexities. But at the same time, they have this reservoir of energy that allows them you know, to be in lower vibration states, higher vibration states, constricted, contracted, angry, fearful, shameful, guilty kind of states, or those more expanded, peaceful, calm, stable kinds of states. So that's why I spoke of capacities and used the metaphor of a reservoir of energy. And that reservoir can collapse or expand? How much can it take? How much can that reservoir take? The more, the better, of course. So in that case, I, uh, I introduced these four levels. A collapsed reservoir where there is no room for energy. Now, these are the things that affect the, leader, the leader's attitude, their character, their mood. You know, again, for all of you who've, who've ever been into this uh, leadership uh, industry, this game in business, you always hear this thing in hiring when they say, if you don't have the skill, I can teach it to you. But if you don't have the attitude, I don't know what to do. That's usually a capacity thing because they don't know how can I raise you into a higher state or a higher capacity. But we can, as integrally informed leaders or leadership practitioners, we know, and we're gonna talk about that in a, in a while, we know about meditation, we know about presence, we know about subject object uh, uh, process. We know that capacities and raising vibration can be achieved. And that's why we wanna bring that into the conversation of leadership. So collapses where there's no space for that at all. Constricted is a little more expanded, but still not that much. Expanded, again, I mean, this is just directly self-evident uh, uh, from the definition. And then there's the encompassing. What I thought about, and uh, I was first introduced into this mapping you see on the screen between leading with consciousness, Wilbur states, and David Hawkins' map of consciousness. I was first introduced to this in uh, the uh, working with uh, Dr. Khalid Shirbini. He's one of the leading integral thinkers in our region and I was studying with him at the time and he's the one presented with us. I'm going to met, I'm going to reference him a couple of times in this presentation. Uh, so why I was inspired uh, by him and, and to do is this mapping. It's not easy to explain what a collapsed reservoir of energy looks like if we're just going to talk about gross from the integral uh, states. But it's easier to describe it from Hawkins' level. It's easier to say that a collapsed reservoir of energy would make the person or the leader in a state of shifting between shame, feeling they're bad, they are always doing bad. There's no use, apathy. There's no use of anything. 
There's really no need to do anything, no need to put any effort. Everything is going to hell anyway. The market is bad. The leadership is bad. Everything is bad. Why should I put any effort into this? I'm so sad, grieving for the state of things, how uh, uh, leaders in policy, politics, what are they doing? The, the state of the world, it's, it's, it, it corresponds to those states of shame, guilt, apathy, and grief. When it becomes a little more expanded, but still quite constricted, it's the leader doesn't, uh, isn't incapable of action at all. It's not a matter of, um, there's no use, I will do nothing, everything is bad, everything is dark, everything is negative. No, it becomes more into, I'm I want to do something, but I'm afraid. The world is threatening. The world is threatening. It's full of threats. I need to take care of it and, and, and beware and keep my eye out. And, uh, and then could move into desire. I, I want things. I want to succeed. I want for my team to succeed. Why are we unable to do that? It brings them into anger. So there's this desire, attachment, a need for control, but also fear of what's going to happen and threaten my plans. Uh, angry at not being able to achieve those. And maybe even that sense of pride, not the, not the, health, not the healthy kind, the kind that we're the best. Everybody else should, you know, uh, uh, leave the market for us. Why should I hear from, from someone else, from, from my leader, about how I should do something? Why would I serve my team? They should thank God and Gaia and whatever divine entity they pray to for me being their leader. I'm a gift to them. Why, am I, why are they giving me such a, such a difficult time? You can see those in a constricted kind of level. When it becomes expanded, the leader moves into the, has enough energy to see the world and its potential. I can, we can, the world is filled with opportunities. Let's go out there and grab them. We can do something about it. We can affect a change in the world or in our circumstances, or if we wanna achieve something. They take responsibility for themselves. They start to look inside, not just blaming and pointing fingers on the outside. They have their eyes on the prize encompassing is where they get into you know correspond to hawkins levels of acceptance and reason there's none attachment they they act inspired by wisdom but they don't really fret too much about what's going to happen and that they have to have control over everything they can go with the flow and keep doing what is right in the moment. They have a higher sense of presence and they can start to see the harmony and the opportunities and the wisdom in the world around them and in their teams, in the market, in the competition, in difficult situations they face and crises they may might come across. So you've got those five levels of lone warrior, cog, uh, pioneer, harmonizer and puzzle master mapped against the collapsed, constricted, expanded, and encompassing states. Now, those of you who are familiar with uh, the Wilbur Combs uh, matrix, which basically says that uh, from, again, integral structures and states, is that anybody in a structure of consciousness could experience any state of consciousness, okay? Uh, so when it comes to leading with consciousness, what we just talked about is that you've got the five levels of complexity can experience any of the four levels of uh, capacities. However, again, and this is where I reference Dr. Khalid, this is an idea that he put forth also, is that, uh, and I'm not going to speak on his behalf because I don't want to do injustice to his theory. I'm going to say how I understood it and how I applied it in leading with consciousness, which is, yes, all complexities can experience any state at any time, but for a leader to transform from one level of complexity to another, it requires a minimum amount of that reservoir of energy to unlock the next level. So, for example, we can easily understand that a, a leader at uh, the pioneer level or the orange altitude uh, could uh, 
easily experience a collapsed reservoir of energy. They could at times feel ashamed, feel guilt, feel apathetic. Okay, so you can see that happening. You start with the complexity, you can understand the capacity. But think of it the other way around. If someone's center of gravity, someone's uh, 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 pervading state is a collapsed sense of there is no use, we cannot do anything, uh, there's no need, life is hopeless. How can you see that person unlocking the structure of the pioneer, of the I can, of the let's go and get it? Doesn't compute. So that's the idea that Dr. Khalid put forward, and this is how I was inspired by it, is that you see these gray shaded uh, profiles. Now, if you map them, you'll see it's collapsed lone warrior, constricted lone warrior, expanded cog. It's very simple mapping of the complexities and capacities. But according to that last idea I said, and it still bears a lot of study, that thought, okay, uh, but it's it's very interesting. It makes a lot of sense to me that these gray shaded profiles could happen, but they wouldn't be centers of gravity for leaders. So I wouldn't include them as a guiding profile to work with a leader on developing a collapsed harmonizer. A collapsed harmonizer might be a transitory state rather than a profile of a leader where I, that would guide me to work with him or her on their transformation. So coming to that point, and uh, I see we're doing well on time, so that's good. Uh, I would invite you to take a couple of minutes now, okay, looking at this screen from what you understood from the description of the complexities and the capacities. I want you to do two quick things in a couple of minutes. Where do you think your leadership profile lies? Okay, and keep that in mind. We're going to need it uh, closer to the end of the uh, presentation. And who in your uh, network could be your manager, could be your a husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, someone you know, brother, sister, whoever, someone in your circle who, how would, and so you need to know them. And where do you think? their leadership profile or their leader, leadership avatar lies. So you think about yourself, think about someone, okay, for a couple of minutes. Then we're going to break out into the breakout room. We're going to have 20 minutes in groups of four. So everybody's going to have about five minutes and share, share why you think that person you thought about lies in that uh, 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 profile. You don't have to say who the person is if you want to, you know, uh, reserve their privacy and respect their privacy. But as an exercise, I thought of someone and I think they're in this profile because they have this description of complexity, this description of capacity. Uh, you don't have to get it all right, of course. It's, a, it's for practice and keep your own profile in mind. OK, so I invite you just to take a minute. And then uh, Tina will uh, uh, will 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 uh, put you into the breakout rooms where you can go spend that discussion for twenty minutes, and then we'll come back again. Great. So everyone is back. We're good to go. Yeah, yeah, we are good to go. Uh, I hope you uh, found the exercise uh, informative, interesting, hopefully also fun. Uh, I would suggest if we can take maybe one or two people or three people just to share if they can, you know, do the raise hand <clears throat> where we can, I would love to hear your experience about, <clears throat> sorry, uh, the, the exercise or what we've covered so far, you know, just to, to keep the dialogue going before we move on to the, to the last uh, part. So if anybody wants to share a question or their experience, please just do the, the raise hand and uh, Tina can bring you on stage. Okay, so who wants to raise hand? Who wants to share? Mm -hmm. Just to wait a few seconds. Okay, so if you want to share live, I invite you to raise your hand, okay? Annika is here, please unmute yourself. 
אני קה. אוקיי, היי. זה היה really fun, fun exercise. Uh, and, um, towards the end, we, we kind of came into this, uh, this example about this, or a book about the, or teal organizations came up <laughs> and how it's possible uh, to a certain extent to fake it in a way, or to kind of think, you know, you might think if you know about these concepts, we should keep our own level in mind, right? Or our own constitution in mind. And I was just thinking about this concept of the container or the, because that's not something you can fake really. It's, it's uh, it will either overflow or it won't kind of. So I was, yeah, that was just very interesting to, to kind of connect it to the, That was one thing I wanted to bring up, basically. We had, we had a lot of fun uh, with this. Uh, thank you so much, Annika, for, for mentioning that. And uh, if I may share a couple of thoughts from, from my experience. <clears throat> Definitely, uh, one thing that uh, many times happens when anybody in any discipline, and even in leadership, when they gain a new tool, first thing to do is understand the levels that should be better. And fake them because now I'm now I can look and seem to have you know doing something better than everybody else but you're very true capacities energies vibrations you can't fake those everybody picks up on them uh, which is also why in in leadership in anything actually in anybody trying to develop but in, in, in I mean in organizations and that kind of thing it's needed that the the person's leader the person's mentor, To be available there so he can you know pull them up that person will point to them you're not at the right state you're not at the right capacity and he would help them which is why uh, you if someone's in a team <clears throat> at a certain capacity it's very difficult if their leader is like them or less they're not going to pull them up And so you see, that's why, again, the, the, the whole issue of consciousness is important and makes it easier because now if you're a consultant using this model and going into the organization, you can see this person and his manager and his manager are at this level. That's not going to cause a transformation. The best we can do, I'm going to talk about that in a minute, could be to help them translate, live or perform better from where they are. But I need to go to their leader, the person who influences them, and that's where transformation might happen. So it helps you see where you can go to, to, to affect change, to answer that earlier question. How can we make that transformation that, that most organizations are looking for? So I hope that uh, uh, adds value to you, and thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. So we have uh, Yumbei. Uh, want to share, please? Unmute yourself. Thank you, Tina. Um, thank you. Yeah, first I also would like to say thank you, Mohammed, um, for this, uh, <laughs> this, for your work. And really, um, I, I truly appreciate um, two things in your, in your concept. First the thing is um, the simplicity or simplified <laughs> approach yeah, from the integral. theory the whole theory and to the to the corporate world or to the business um, world and um, that's uh, that's helpful that's very helpful and second point is um, what I truly appreciate is the connection what you made between consciousness and energy energy is consciousness consciousness is energy so that's really great um, to be aware and conscious of about and um, for all <laughs> for all um, so the exercise what we had the group breakout room sessions and also with my experience and working like um, more than 20 years in the corporate world um, I would like to share um, a bit what I experienced my learning and is I realized that 
I myself and also many other leaders um, I experienced in content, um, we could be in different state within one person. <laughs> And that's basically the, the, the highest, what my, according to my understanding, the highest state or consciousness um, is encompassing all of this, integrating all of this. So um, there is one point I would like to um, be mindful about is to put us or others into certain state and then forever. Um, that's my one of my learnings. And to acknowledge and to see and accept as human being, we have within one person in even in, in the same development stage, there could be still another consciousness state coming up into the play. <laughs> and the second learning is uh, um, I would really love to um, take a broader aspect perspective um, in terms of transformation that uh, to make this conscious for all the leaders and for everyone that wounding is a part of the human condition. So healing is needed everywhere. So in the corporate world, in the business world, that is Particularly, we experience, <laughs> yeah, we are living in the traumatized and the traumatizing world. And especially in the business world, it's, um, um, yeah, comes <laughs> into play. And so it's important, I think, for all the leaders, for the, all the conscious leaders to be conscious about that. We all need healing. And the, the third point is the healing happens through connection. Connection from heart to heart. Yes. So, and that's leads me to the question. What I also was wondering in your approach and concept and what could be the effective ways to bring this consciousness into the organization for the leaderships? What kind of embodied way or experiential learning you have, you may have or considered and uh, tried out for the leaders? So thank you. Thank you, Yimbei. Thank you so, so much. A great question. Uh, and actually, I think the question will be answered within the next few minutes, in the next part of the presentation. And in the Q&A, let me know if, if, if that was a satisfactory answer or not. Okay, that's going to come in the next part. Uh, I actually wanted to comment very quickly on, on all the three points you mentioned. And, and thank you very much for sharing them. When we're talking about the states and how everybody can have all those uh, uh, states, and you, you mentioned the, the allusion to uh, energy, I always see the, 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 the states or the capacities as vibrations, and we're tuning into them. You, we can tune into all of them. You know, and we're in, when, when we're at a higher one, we're encompassing others, but we can keep tuning. The reason for the model and, and why I, I went to this uh, talking about capacities and the capacity collapses and expands to allow the flexibility that I'm not in a box, but at the same time, which vibration am I tuning into most of the time? You know, I, I switch to the radio and I don't change the channel. I'm, a, I'm on fear and I don't leave. I'm on anger and I'm not going to the other ones. OK, so that's why I, I, I tried, as you said, yeah, it, it's not one thing, but unfortunately, without being aware, we could stay in one and think, you know, that's that's how the world is. And that's why I wanted to bring the concept of consciousness in a simple way, because in my experience, if you go to a leader and by the way, it's not just go to a leader. It's the type <laughs> of leader I used to be. Okay, I used to be like this. Someone comes and tells me. Uh, you're very angry uh, and you need to expand your consciousness. And I'm like, 
that you know like, like this was like 10 years ago what the hell is this person talking about <laughs> of course i'm angry because everybody because everybody else is bad and i'm good and i i they, i should be angry so that's what you know become aware of the model so now we can talk about okay let's now look at what we can do to help you move in the capacity um so yeah that that's just uh, one of those a point i wanted to uh, comment on and the other thing is as you said we need healing we need connection uh, we need to bring that into the uh, uh, into a lot of fields like corporate like business like politics the, the thing that encouraged me or drove me to focus on this leading with consciousness is, and mind you, I'm, as I said, I'm Egyptian and I'm, most of the work I did is in the Middle East, mm -hmm. but for multinational corporations, okay? Mm -hmm. So you can see now, now when, when, when you see the levels of consciousness, it's a much bigger difference between heads of corporations and CEOs who in the more Western developed world who are speaking from green or even teal, trickling down all those changes. And I'm here in Egypt or in Saudi Arabia, hearing some concepts that are again, green and second tier and the people performing them are doing that from red and amber and things turn out to be extremely uh, 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 disfigured. One of those concepts is we need healing. And sometimes when the, the leader is, is, is just is not at that level in, on the ladder and they can't see it, the concept doesn't come through. Again, why the model is useful so we can identify who can understand this concept and make that change. Instead of, instead of wasting time, you know, uh, talking about all these very lofty concepts to a big audience and nothing happens, which is which is basically what usually happens in in leadership development. Yes. These kind of trainings. So, <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to you know uh, uh, share those and thank you so much for for keeping that dialogue going. And to answer your question, I'm gonna go to that right now through the slides, and then I can hear your comment and everybody else's comment on it in uh, during the Q and A. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very very much. So I'll just uh, share the slides one more time. So the, 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 the first part, you've seen the theory, okay? It's mostly theoretical uh, that we were talking about. Now, if we come a little into application, uh, you can see the, uh, the, the, the profiles, or I call them leadership avatars, that are not shading gray, the ones I would consider uh, applicable uh, are uh, 14. Then I thought, let's do something so we can start applying these concepts to people who and leaders who don't necessarily know about this and are introduced to it for the same for the first time. And uh, yeah, by the way, just to comment also, uh, I can see one question is, is there a test to assess myself in this system? It is something I'm working on. Uh, it's so it's being created that that test it will take some time also to you know move from just a self-assessment to a little more psychometric where it can be uh, uh, validated but that's something i'm building into the model uh, steve you are correct so before we have that model and so before I have the the assessment and we're still starting to apply this in conversation i thought of how about if we bunch these profiles into four categories so you'll notice that the collapsed lone warrior, constricted lone warrior, collapsed cog, constricted cog, and I also added the constricted pioneer. I bunched them together into a category I called problematic. I struggled a little with that title, kind of like I don't want to label someone as problematic, but at the same time, you know, maybe we need to, to call things as they are. The description is, these five uh, avatars of, of, of leadership would probably, by empirical evidence and observations in today's market, they would most likely not fit into most organizations and would cause more problems than they would solve. Then, and I'll show you in a, just in a couple of slides, you'll see this mapped on uh, right, right here and, and, and it will, uh, show you something cool. 
the conventional, which you, I, I would consider the expanded Lone Warrior, encompassing Lone, Lone Warrior, in, expanded COG and encompassing COG, are more old school leadership. It's the leadership that uh, was accepted and was effective maybe 60, 70 years ago in the market. Uh, you would find them much more common in countries and markets that are not very advanced. So when the, when the market and the country and the, and the group in general is around amber, you would, uh, moving maybe into orange, from COG into Pioneer, you'd find that conventional style of leadership. It's the, uh, 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 it's the, the, the grand master kind of style. I'm experienced and I know what to do. I'm here to help you. Uh, and I'm just going to tell you how to do it. And the, 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 the employees themselves are following kind of the same thing. Yes, please tell us what to do. We will do it. And uh, if something goes wrong, we don't know. I mean, someone else comes and tells us we don't know. We can't we can't act on that. We don't know. We're just waiting for those instructions to trickle down and so on. The third category I bunched into it, the expanded pioneer, encompassing pioneer and expanded harmonizer. And I called it modern. Why did I call it modern? It's the profile of the leaders today that are very effective and most people aspire to. This is, this is, this is what was in the past 10, 15 years, everybody's trying to be this. Everybody's trying to be more competitive, but at the same time, more in uh, 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 accepting we're trying to tone down you know all the competition laws started coming out right here we don't want uh, uh, we're trying to take care of one of profit but at the same time take care of the uh, of the market take care of the planet uh, take care of each other become more diverse more inclusive it's very current style of leadership the next gen or the next generation is simply the second tier, encompassing harmonizer and encompassing puzzle master. That's what the uh, future requires. And also as John Maxwell says, it's kind of the future is now, it's already happening now, but it's uh, the, the circumstances for it is, 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 is happening now and it moves uh, the leader into, into the future and what's gonna be needed in the next two, three, four, five years and the next 10 years, definitely. So I bunched those. You're going to notice something. Why did I do that? If you see, again, the, by the way, the colors I used here have nothing to do with the uh, colors of spiral dynamics or integral. It's just I, I couldn't find any new colors to use. So, so that's just uh, it's just a color code for you to look here. That the problematic profiles, you'll notice. What's the difference between the problematic profiles and the blue or the conventional profiles you'll notice the differences in the capacity mostly between those red ones highlighted in red and those highlighted in blue and that would if i'm working with a leader or working with an organization now i'd see if i have a bunch of leaders or a team or one person and they're in that problematic category then it's better to focus on working on their capacity than working on their complexity if I work on their complexity, I might move them from, or I might help them move from lone warrior to cog, but they're still collapsed and constricted. They're still problematic. They're still not fitting very much into the culture and the organization that's happening. It's easier and better to work on the capacity than work on complexity. So you see that where this is going. Conventional to modern, it's actually the other way around let's work on complexity here okay and the same thing would be with next gen with maybe uh, depending on where they exactly they are so so now as i said we're moving into application we start to see what could we do for each category or for each profile when identified and that's uh that's why uh it brings me to the concept that uh, I came across in Wilbur's work of transformation versus translation. What exactly are we doing here? Do we want to cause a transformation and achieve new complexities and go to new structures? Because that's going to take time, going to take effort, it's going to take a lot of follow-up. Structures and complexities don't change overnight. 
So that would, should be expected by the organization. They should know what they're trying to do. Or are we uh, going into uh, translation, helping them expand the capacity, lead the best they can from where they are? Uh, so to give you quick examples and to answer uh, uh, Yunbei's uh, uh, question. For example, now when we start to insert leadership lessons into the model, we'd see like if we want to move from uh, from pro out of problematic leadership, then let's focus on capacities. Let's ask questions like, is this a chronic issue or is it acute issue? What is the cause of this low capacity? Does it have to do with the workplace? Does it have to do something personal? So we can help the leader work on that. Do they have the willingness to expand and develop? Because if they don't, we're not going to be able to do anything for that. That requires basically a lot of coaching and follow-up so we can do what you know the the concept robert keegan talks about the subject object process we need to help them see become self-aware that creates an expansion where new consciousness can come in they can start to have those new vibrations that new energy okay or we wouldn't like to go there but sometimes it happens maybe that person we need to sever the relationship with that person it's too problematic and they're not seeing it and they're not working on the capacity. But if we got a group or again, a, a one of the profiles and it's from conventional to modern, probably as you saw on that uh, table, probably here we wanna work on complexity more. I put here some of the topics that we can work on that if, if, you, if you talk about them to someone at the problematic uh, uh, profiles, might not resonate but here we can start to talk about influence how you should influence someone uh, uh, through through respect and uh, through connection okay not just through instructions which is a more conventional style talking about character bringing that into play talking about attitude how bad attitudes good attitudes could could make a difference in the impact because simply most of the time, moving from conventional to modern, from red to amber, you, what's happening here is the leader is starting to take a third person perspective, or we're helping them take a third person perspective by seeing those things. Let's start to work with amber concepts and, and, and uh, practices of problem solving, being objective, analyzing problems, setting priorities. All these things require that third person objective objectivity, which is an amber state or an amber concept. Things like teamwork, self-discipline, personal growth, shifting the mindset from maintenance to creation, conventional versus modern, from uniformity, this is how things are done, to diversity, this is how we can include uh, 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 new concepts, uh, look at the best way to do things. From soloist, I'm the leader, I already know what's best to do, to I'm conducting a team, how they can lead themselves. So these are some concepts that I already taught uh but uh, then in my practice as what before including uh, uh consciousness into the uh, into this uh model uh but then yeah now we i can see where they fit now for the sake of time i'm going to rush through the next couple of slides but we will share them in in a pdf uh, for for you to uh, to go back to them but just some quick ideas is that for example, from modern to next generation, you're talking about second tier here, for example, uh, uh, green and then teal. Now we want to look at uh, from goals to growth, uh, from career to calling, moral authority, not just positional authority, building ladders for other people, uh, uh, being able to please and challenge, direct and connect all at the same time. So it's that, that encompassing complex uh, mentality. So we bring in those lessons talking about these lessons for someone who's at a different level would either not be accepted or be translated into a uh, misunderstood uh, a way so the point here of leading with consciousness if you uh, decide to work with it yourself or bring it to your teams is that when we start to see leaders and see ourselves in terms of complexity and capacity we can start to tailor what they need, how it's going to be delivered, and what do we need? Is it, is it, and do we need trans translation or transformation? And then we apply that. Uh, so that's the leader, leading with consciousness uh, model. Uh, and thank you so much for giving me the time to share it with you.
Uh, before we go to the uh, Q and A, if we have time for it, I hope we can. I just want to let you know that uh, the whole model. Uh, I'm sorry, we, yeah, have, we have three minutes. three minutes. Two minutes. So okay, okay. So so uh, let me tell you just very quickly: the leading with consciousness model itself, plus the leadership training, is available as a course. If you want to attend it, it will be launching uh, in uh, June this year. So uh, if you if you want to uh, join that again for yourself or for your teams, uh, on my website you would also find another course called Quantum Consciousness. This is not a leadership one. This is quantum physics. All these mysteries, understanding quantum physics, and seeing integral structures and states through the lens of quantum it's very fun uh, uh course if you're interested in that kind of thing we're also launching uh that will be kicking off uh in a few days in may 29th last but not least is stages of the mind stage of the mind is actually proprietary uh, uh course of dr khalid shirbini and i have the uh, pleasure and honor to be co-facilitating that course with him simply put it's the Enneagram types, the nine types journeying through and as they develop through the nine uh, uh, stages uh, of structure, stages of uh, the integral model. Uh, if you want to know more about that, by the way, Dr. Khalid is presenting in detail the model and how it was all put together tomorrow uh, at 11, if you want to join him for that. And the course itself will be launching also on June 9th. So please, if you want to join any of those courses, you can go to that link uh, on my website. You can have the QR code if you want to check that right away. What I do want you to not forget is the gift I would like you to use. Just use the code IEC15 and you get 15% off any of these courses. Share the code around for yourself, for your family, for your friends, anyone. You can just copy and paste it to whoever you want. And uh, that's where you can go to uh, find all those courses. Uh, and last but not least, I would love to stay in touch with you. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, if you have any uh, comments, if you want to talk more about the model, uh, unfortunately, with the time, we, we didn't. Uh, I hope Tina can give us a couple more minutes for Q&A if she allows it. If she doesn't, find uh, Facebook or find me on uh, YouTube. Yes.